Human beings are capable of horrifying, spine-chilling deeds. We've all heard of the worst evils inflicted upon innocents, and every year a new case stuns us into silence, making us wonder if there's a line humans won't cross. In this series, we're going to look at disturbing real-life crimes. This is Cold-Blooded Crimes. Jesus Vedesma Avilao was a Mexican national who was executed for the murder of a couple. Aguilar's case sparked an international incident between Mexico and the United States, when Mexico filed a lawsuit against the United States in the International Court of Justice for Aguilar's right to be denied to see a Mexican consular official. Avila's story began on November 28, 1963, when he was born in the small town of Reynosa, Tamaulipas, Mexico. He was the oldest of six children and had a troubled childhood. He dropped out of school in the eighth grade because he kept failing classes and his idiotic behavior with teachers and fellow students. He ended up leading a different life after that, increasingly becoming lonely now that he was spending a lot of time outside of school. He would even lock himself up in his room for a whole day. Avila's sad childhood without education and friends left him with few choices in his life. Eventually, he started to smoke cigarettes and dabble in petty crimes. As he got older, he started to snatch bugs to fuel his drug habits too. His life seemed to be on a decline since leaving school at an early age. Now he was committing himself to a life of crime. Aguilar shot a police officer in the leg and chest in 1983. The officer survived, but Aguilar was sentenced to 10 years in prison for attempted capital murder. While in prison, Aguilar became a member of the Texas Syndicate prison gang, a notorious prison gang with a history of violence. In March 1993, Aguilar was discharged from prison and returned to Reynosa. He soon became involved in the drug trade transporting marijuana from Texas to Mississippi with his friend Rick Esparza, a drug dealer in Harlingen, Texas. Abila and Esparza's relationship soon soured after Esparza began transporting drugs to Mississippi for another supplier. Abila felt that Esparza was stealing his business and began threatening his life if he did not stop. On June 8, 1995, Esparza and his wife, left for Mississippi with a load of drugs. Esparza often asked his sister Annette and her family to stay in his trailer home while he and his wife were out of town. On June 10 at about 5 o'clock a.m. after a night of drinking, Aguilar and his nephew, Christopher Quiros, entered the trailer home and shot Annette and Leonardo Chavez Sr. Both victims were also severely beaten. Leonardo was shot in the back of the head and Annette was shot through the neck. The police were quickly alerted to the crime and began investigating. They found that Abila and Quiroz had sold a 22 caliber revolver, the same type of weapon used in the murders, to a pawn shop shortly after the crime. They also found that Abila had a motive for the killings, as he had been in a dispute with Leo Sr. over a drug debt. Based on this evidence, the police arrested Aguilar and Quiroz. They were charged with capital murder and put on separate trials. Aguilar's trial began on July 10, 1995. While Aguilar had admitted he smuggled marijuana from South Texas to Mississippi, he denied murdering his ex-partner's sister and her husband because of a drug dispute. I had nothing to do with this. I was at home at the time of the killings. But he did not know that nine years old Leo Jr. had witnessed the murder of his parents from under the table. The prosecution presented evidence linking Abila to the crime, including the pawned gun and testimony from Leo Jr. Identifying Abila as one of the assailants, where Leo Jr. testified that he was awakened by gunfire on the morning of the murders. He said that he got out of bed and went into the kitchen. From there, he saw his parents on the floor with two men standing over them. He testified that he heard Quiroz tell his father to get your fat ass up, and then Quiroz shot him. 
He then saw Avilar take the gun from Quiros and shoot his mother. The jury found Avilar guilty of capital murder, and he was sentenced to death. Ledesma Avilar appealed his conviction and sentence in state and federal court, making several arguments for why his conviction and sentence should be overturned. One of Avilar's main arguments was that the trial court violated his 14th Amendment right. He argued that the jury should have been instructed on a less severe crime as an option in addition to the capital crime he was charged with. Avilar also claimed that his Sixth Amendment right was violated, because his lawyer did not properly brief his sufficiency of the evidence argument on direct appeal in state court. Avilar argued that the Texas Court of Criminal Appeals was biased on direct appeal and relied on facts, not on the record. He also claimed that the trial court violated his right to due process to appoint a ballistics expert to testify on his behalf. However, all of Avilar's appeals were denied by the Texas Court of Criminal Appeals and the US and he was set to be executed. As Aguilar's execution date approached, his case sparked an international incident between the United States and Mexico. Mexico argued that Avilar had not been informed of his right to contact the Mexican consulate under the Vienna Convention on Consular Relations. The International Court of Justice ruled in favor of Mexico finding that Texas prison officials had denied Aguilar his right to see a Mexican consular official. But still, it was not enough to save Aguilar and in the end, Aguilar was executed by lethal injection on May 24, 2006, seven minutes after the lethal injection. At 6.32 p.m., a doctor pronounced him dead. Avilar gave a statement just before the lethal dose began to flow alternating between English and Spanish. I would like to say to my family, I am all right. He then turned to the victim's families and tried to find Leonardo Chavez Jr., who witnessed the crimes 11 years ago. Where are you, Leo? Are you there, Leo? Don't lie, man. He then asked the victim's families if they were happy he was dying. Leonardo Chavez Jr fought back tears as he read from a written statement after the execution. His time has come, he Aguilar, now has to pay for what he did to my parents and for leaving us orphans, Chavez said as he wiped tears from his eyes, quoting his nephew. This is a little difficult for me to say, but I forgive Aguilar and Cueros for what they did, and may God have mercy on their souls. The story of Jesus Ledesma Aguilar is a tragic one, marked by senseless violence and the loss of two innocent lives. The execution of Aguilar brought a mix of emotions for Leonardo Chavez Jr. and his family. While they were finally able to see justice served, the memory of their loss still lingered and caused great pain. Despite this, Chavez found the strength to forgive Aguilar and Cueros and prayed for their souls. This shows the incredible resilience and compassion of the human spirit, even in the face of tragedy. What do you think about Aguilar's appeals being denied? Do you think justice was served? And what might have motivated Leonardo to forgive the people who killed his parents? Let us know in the comments, and do not forget to like and subscribe. Press the bell icon to get notifications for our new episodes of Cold-Blooded Crimes.